I was 26 when the first novel came out. I um, had, up to that stage, published nothing, absolutely nothing. No short stories had been accepted. Very few had been written, actually. I hadn't been writing newspaper journalism. I just hadn't written anything that was of publishable quality. Um, and all I was really, I think what I found was I'd been interested in writing for a very, very long time. Uh, probably since the time I saw Yankee Doodle Dandy um, when I was about six years old. Um, do you remember the, there used to be a series of James Cagney films on a Saturday night called The Cagney Cavalcade in the 1970s, 60s? And, uh, and I remember Yankee Doodle Dandy and seeing um, uh, Cagney play George M. Cohen, the, the great um, vaudevillian and songwriter. And uh, I just thought I, that's, that was so attractive. I wanted to write songs. That was the first thing. And then it was poems, and then it was short stories. But I actually, the only thing I found that I, I could do with any degree of confidence finally was novels. So everything was channeled towards wanting to write, but not knowing what to write. Uh, from a very, very early age, I knew I wanted to, I knew that I, um, yeah, I wanted to do it, but I, but I couldn't find what it was. And it never had occurred to me, really, that you would write a, a novel. Um, and then sometime in my uh, late teens, I, early 20s probably, I, um, I read a couple of novels, uh, Salman Rushdie's Midnight's Children being one, and a great novel by the American uh, writer John Dos Passos, um, a trilogy co published as USA. And I thought these were such immense books that wanted to take on as their subject whole countries. And... Um, and I thought that, well, there, that's the form. The novel is the form if you want to write about a place like Northern Ireland. And I did want to write about Northern Ireland, um, not just the place, but about the idea of Northern Ireland, um, this country that had come into existence within my own grandmother's lifetime. Um, I wanted to write about that, and so I decided I'd have, I'd have a go at, at novels. I've never felt more uncomfortable in my entire life than going to Hiroshima and uh, doing a talk and a reading to an audience um, that wanted to know so much about um, where I came from. And uh, at the time that I was there, I was, um, I was supposed to be writing a, a piece about a, a song. There was a, a publication coming out called Belfast Songs, because Belfast being as famous as Belfast is, there are an awful lot of songs about Belfast, or with Belfast in the title, ranging from Boney M, Belfast, Belfast, um, through to uh, Belfast Child by Simple Minds. Uh, I was given a James Taylor song called Belfast to Boston to write about. And, um, and when I got to Hiroshima, I was, I was thinking to myself, I can't think of a single song. No, I could think of one song um, that, that mentioned um, anything to do with the atom bomb blast. There. It was Enola Gay by Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. There may be others, but I couldn't think of them. And I was just thinking there was a, a curious loss of perspective and scale um, sometimes when, when we talk about this place. And arising out of that came um, an interest in Japan and um, a desire to write something. So I wrote a short piece uh, about being in uh, being in Japan, being in Hiroshima, trying to write uh, another piece about... This is getting complicated, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I wrote something, I came away, and I thought to myself, I want to go back. And on the last night that I was in um, Japan, I was out, and we had been at the um, university in Hiroshima. There had been a reception. Uh, we had then gone for dinner. And after dinner... We arrived back at the hotel, and I was with a Japanese friend, and I said to him, we were just about to go into the hotel, and I said, I want to go for another drink. And he said, ah, a third party, which is that that's the name that in the English translation from the Japanese term for the thing you do, the drink you shouldn't have, late at night, when you've already been to a reception and a dinner. It's the, so that was it. It's called the third party. And as soon as he said third party, I thought, that's the title of a novel, because in English, of course, third party has all those other connotations, the unidentified other person. And uh, it also, it also um, instantly made me um, think of The Third Man, the great Carol Reed uh, film based on the script by Graham Greene. 
And uh, so that was intriguing. So um, in the way that fiction does begin, suddenly a few things had just coalesced. And by the time I was on the plane home, I was in my head already writing the novel called The Third Party. And, uh, and then I got back home and I realised that I didn't really have enough knowledge of Japan. Uh, I'd only been there for four days um, to write a novel. So I went back several times in the years um, that followed. And then I kept going back to Hiroshima. Uh, not often enough that I'm absolutely sure that I should call it Hiroshima or Hiroshima, um, but I kept going back, and uh, and eventually I did write the novel. And the only way I could think to write the novel was to to have a character who was like me, an outsider. Um, so I invented a Belfast businessman uh, who is um, in Japan to sell his revolutionary form of uh, food wrap. I spotted her in the park a short time later, not far from the queue for the peace bell, skipping as she talked to her husband, making grabs for his hand, stamping her foot at a persistent pigeon. You observed it in everyone, of course, the relief at being outside again in the spring sunshine, free from the bone dust. Hers, though, was relief of a different order. She had let herself walk right to the edge of a precipice and had had a good look at what lay below. I think she knew she could, at the time of her choosing, take the next step and live. She was relieved but excited. Her husband, by the looks of him, could not quite believe his luck to have landed her in the first place to have her dancing around him like this. I last saw them arm in arm on the dome side of the bridge below Ioe headed past the spot indicated in the museum by the red marker towards the Hondori Arcade. I sat on a seat on the Peace Park side. A small pleasure boat passed between us, turning in a wide arc beneath the short stem of the IOE Bridge's T, a scurf of cherry blossom washed by the wake against the wall below me. Behind me, the Peace Bell tolled, and a few seconds later tolled again. Oh God. What had I done? Not done, not said. A single word would have been enough. She would have taken the step. It didn't matter that she would never have looked at me twice had she met me outside. Normal rules did not apply in there. The whole place was a monument to the unprecedented. The day before, I'd, passed on my way, I'd paused on my way out to read the visitor's book. A terrible reminder someone had written. It was terrible how destructive the weapons were, how quickly lives could be extinguished or turned inside out, how short a time really, when you thought about it, any of us had here. Why not gamble? <laughs>